Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and um, this is a video for naming and writing binary covalent compounds. Um, in order to name binary and covalent compounds, we first have to be able to recognize um, what they're made of. And binary covalent compounds are made up of two things, obviously from the name bi, okay? And they're only made up of non-metals. Now we have a periodic table here, we've passed the topic of periodic tables, but it pops up again in the topic of bonding, so we can't forget it, okay? And this periodic table I have here and it has some nice um, colors that indicate um, your non-metals, okay? Your metals and your semi-metals, okay? So you gotta know these people, all right? Because if you have a test or a quiz and they mix ionic and covalent compounds, they're not going to tell you which is which. You have to know that if it's only made up of non-metals, it's covalent. If it's made up of a metal and a non-metal, it's ionic. Okay, so it's very, very important um, that we notice, folks. So please be able to recognize your covalent and ionic compounds. Also, guys, we have to know our prefixes. Okay, it's very, very important that we know our prefixes from 1 through 10. Um, our Greek prefixes. So please take a few minutes to memorize those guys. They're not that bad. If you notice, many of them are shapes that we dealt with when we were younger. So you should be able to uh, memorize that in a few minutes. Okay, so we're moving on. All right, we have some, some brief rules here. Um, the best way to do this is with an example, but our first rule is going to be the first element is as is. Okay, if it's only one of them, okay. Um, we don't use a prefix, but if it's more than one, okay, we will use the prefix for that. Okay, the second element for rule number two gets an I, D, E ending. Okay, we will use the appropriate prefix for that guy. All right, and rule number three, if the second element begins with A, E, or O, we will drop the A, okay, of the prefixes, tetra through deca. Now that might be a little confusing, but um, we'll, once again, we'll do an example, so we're not going to panic. We'll have an example in a second. Now, a bit of background, folks. Covalent compounds, they share electrons, okay? And um, we haven't really done this actual in terms of drawing them out and show how they share already. Okay, we'll do that um, this week, all right? But they actually share electrons to be more stable. We have two hydrogens right here. There's one here, and there's another here. Okay, they will actually share each of their electrons in their valence shell, their only electron, okay, to become more stable, a more stable H2 molecule. So we'll talk about that later on in class as we go on. Now over here, we have an example of a metal and a non-metal. Okay, we know from experience in our studies of ionic bonding that metals tend to lose electrons and non-metals tend to gain. So covalent, we're sharing, and in ionic bonding, there's transfer of electrons. Okay. Now we have some examples here. They're very, very, very simple. We have CCl4, typical quiz question. You could be asked to name this. Okay, first and foremost, you recognize whether this guy is ionic or covalent. You have carbon right here, and if you're not sure, you don't panic, you just go back to your reference table. You see the location of carbon over here, it's in the non-metal section. Okay, you see chlorine over here, also in the non-metal section. Okay, they're both non-metals, and that should tell you the bonding is covalent. And then you follow the rules. Now notice we don't have to say monocarbon to so the first guy. If it's only one, it's understood. So we will just write carbon down, okay, carbon. Now, for the next guy, chlorine, he will get an I-D-E ending, so he's, he's going to end in I'd, so he'll be chloride, all right? Now, how many chlorines do we have? We have four of them. Now, what's the Greek prefix of four? It's tetra, so we simply say carbon, tetra, chloride. Okay, and you're done. Carbon tetrachloride. Now what you can do right now, you can pause the video and do the next two. And I'll tell you the solution in a second. 
Okay, um, in this second example, we see we have nitrogen, and if you want to check really quick, okay, nitrogen is also a non-metal. We have oxygen, which is also here, another non-metal. So once again, non-metals coming together to make a compound. It will tell you it's a covalent compound, so we use, we're going to use our Greek prefixes once again. In this situation, we happen to have two nitrogens, so we will simply say di nitrogen and in this situation over here in terms of oxygen we have four of them but we have to be careful instead of putting tetra oxide down we have to drop the a of the tetra based on rule number three that we had right here okay so what's going to happen is, guys, the A of the tetra will be dropped, and we will get tetroxide. T-E-T-R-O-X-I-D-E. -E. Tetroxide. Okay, the A is dropped. Okay, for the last one, we see we have B. B is boron. All right. Now, how many borons do I have, folks? I have two of them, right? So I got to put what? I got to put di in front of here. So it's diboron, and we have F6 over here. So we will say, what's the prefix for 6? Yes, it's hexa. And fluoride. Okay, and you're done. So we have carbon tetrachloride, dinitrogen tetroxide, diboron, hexa, fluoride okay and you're an expert already and we'll move on now I haven't have I don't I didn't write any rules here because once you're able folks to name um, the covalent compounds writing the formula is very 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 simple okay so what you're gonna do you're gonna pause the video and you're gonna answer these guys right here I'm sure you're gonna get them right but pause the video answer these guys and we'll go over them in a second Okay, um, the first guy is dinitrogen monoxide. We know from experience di simply means two. Nitrogen is element that's in front. So dinitrogen will simply look like this, N subscript two. Okay, two nitrogens, dinitrogen. Okay, so uh, we know from experience that nitrogen and oxygen are non-metals so we know it's going to make a covalent compound all right so that's what we know to do it like this all right and oxygen right how many do we have here we have only one mon mono one okay so we just put one oxygen there and we're done okay nice and simple now phosphorus tribromide once again you look up phosphorus and you'll see that it's in the non-metal section along with bromine, bromine, bromide, bromine, okay, that's in group 17, halogen, so simply we put phosphorus down, now there's no um, Greek prefix for that guy, because understood it's only one, now how many bromines do we have, if we have tri, we have three of them, so bromine, three, okay, so PBR3 will be your phosphorus tribromide, and the last one over here is sulfur hexafluoride. Once again, this is also very simple. Sulfur is S and F fluoride, okay, fluorine, F, okay, and hexa refers to six. And I said before my other videos, always use your reference table as a tool. Don't make up names for stuff. If you're not sure about the spelling, if you're not sure about the symbol, use table S in conjunction with your PR table, use your atomic numbers and identify the elements correctly. Okay, all right. On my next slide over here, I have a mixture of compounds. Some of these guys are ionic, some are covalent. So what you're gonna do right now, you're gonna pause the video and I want you to identify the covalent ones and name them, okay? All righty. This guy right here is covalent. It's made up of nonmetals only. Okay, this guy right here is covalent. 
Okay, this guy right here is covalent, and that's about it. Now, we got to be careful, folks, with this one right here. It looks covalent, but this is a polyatomic ion with a um, positive ion and a negative S ion. Okay, this is an ionic compound. Even though they're all nonmetals, you watch out for that situation there. So the three, cir the three are circled here are all covalents, and they'll make, okay, um, covalent compounds. Now, um... How do we name the first one? I think we did this one um, on a previous slide, phosphorus tribromide, so we'll skip that one. Okay, this guy right here, CF4, it will be simply carbon. Tetra fluoride. Okay, we did a similar example on a recent slide. And P2S3 will be what, folks? Okay. Di phosphorus three S's will be tri sulfide. Okay, and you're done. All right, I'm moving on to the next slide. Now, on this slide, we have the reverse situation. We want to write the formulas, so pause it the video and circle the guys which you know to be covalent and you will then write the correct formula okay um this guy right here is covalent non-metal non-metal okay this guy right here is covalent so you circle that one right there carbon monoxide carbon and oxygen is covalent okay this guy's covalent Covalent, covalent, and that's it. How do I know the others are not covalent? I'm looking at the metal. Once I see metal, okay, I know that's not going to be in a covalent compound. I can move on from there. Okay. Um, dinitrogen sulfide will simply be N2S. Okay. Carbon monoxide, very famous um, lethal toxic guy, will be C. O, one carbon, one oxygen. Diboron tetrahydride. Di means two for us, right? So B, two. Tetra means what? Four. Good. So that's four hydrogens. So you see the pattern here? We're just using the Greek prefixes to indicate the amount of the elements that we have. And we're not making it confusing. All right? And phosphorus pentabromide is P, B, R and subscript 5. All right. Sulfur dichloride, very, very simple. It means you just simply have an S and you have two chlorines. All right, guys. So, once again, it's very, very simple to do um, covalent compounds, but the key is you have to be able to identify what a covalent compound is. Okay, so they're made up of only non metals. Okay, and once you're able to do that, you follow your use your Greek prefixes right here, and you're good to go. Um, I hope this video was a help to you. Um, I'll be coming up with some more videos to do help us with review. And as always, guys, better than videos and and doing this all this stuff is you studying. And as always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Take care, and I hope this was a help.